the wolves on the shore. Thrice stood, thrice beheld, thrice spake to his brethren in this wise. See you yon laden shore, heavy with riches, thick with gems, ripe with profits of all sorts for the taking. Methinks it worthwhile a flight there to eat and drink and take my fill of those fruitful shores. Then the threefold spake in likewise accord. Yes, this be a fond enterprise, but how? The river be deep and wide, and its current be strong and swift. Now the wolves, for that they be to a one, were strong and swift, and also immortal, on account of their homeland's mastery of magical herbs and ailments. But they also were abased with predatory ambition, lordly impatience, and senile greed. And so they thought to scheme a way around that impertinent current, not for fear of any physical peril, but for, in their pride and haste, refusal to acquiesce to superior power. The youngest wolf, the newest in their pack, took for himself a long, heavy tree branch, and from that tree hewed a log, and on these attempted to ferry himself across the river. Before he had reached a quarter of the way, a surging rapid bucked him from his perch, and he swam back to his fellows wet and empty-handed. The second, a more cunning beast, but just as brash, fashioned a raft out of several logs lashed together with strips torn from his own clothes, and on this attempted a similar feat to his younger comrade, only to achieve similar fortunes. The third wolf, the oldest and wisest of the three, said to his fellows, Our hitherto efforts have led us to naught but frustration and failure. Let us instead combine our strength, then our collective pool will be greater than the sum of our adversaries. Once again, they were in accord, and as a mind they gathered as many long branches and thick logs as they each could carry at a time, and amassed a huge pile by the river bank. They then set themselves to constructing a bridge that would see them dryly from their one shore to the other that was their so desperate desire. But in their haste, their plans were flawed. Their measurements were off. These planks were too short, whereas those were too long, and after three days and three nights of work, as they neared the halfway point of their endeavor, a mighty rainstorm gorged the river to where the wolves and all their works were washed clear away to land on an elbow curve of their same shore. And so the three wolves, though still immortal, all went home wet, battered and hungry, never to suckle the sweet delights of yonder way, for their own animal natures had barred their passage.